I'm going to talk today about graphical displays in R for clinical trials. I'm going to briefly survey the history of statistical graphics, uh, discuss the essential role of visualization of clinical trial data, the use of R in creating specialized graphics for clinical trials, and then um, I'll talk briefly about major pitfalls to be avoided in graphical displays for clinical trials and guidelines for well-designed, powerful graphics. Graphical displays are often, as we all know, much more informative than numerical tables and lists. Visualization of clinical trial data is essential for evaluating the progress of the trial, and for first determining the outcome, then understanding uh, what we found, and finally explaining it uh, to a wider audience. The creation of effective graphical displays involves art as well as science. Uh, the psychology of human perception uh, matters greatly in how a um, graphic will be understood by the viewer, uh, and we'll talk more about that later. So um, this process requires careful thought and also careful execution. It's valuable to keep in mind uh, always what information would be helpful to the audience and how can we show them this information accurately and without misleading. The capabilities of R let us develop and produce clinical trial graphics for many purposes, uh, exploring the data, monitoring and assessing safety and efficacy. Um, uh, I think I'll skip this list now because I will go into it in more detail in my discussion of R. For clinical trial data, uh, we must take great care to avoid um, pitfalls and presentation errors in creating our graphics uh, and to follow guidelines and best practices. The history of classical, uh, of statistical graphics might begin in the uh, classical period. Uh, some highlights include uh, Playfair's development in the late 1700s of the first line plot, bar chart, and pie graph. Uh, these methods are still widely used today. Um, Snow's uh, work on the cholera epidemic in London, in which he plotted cholera deaths by neighborhood to locate the source of the disease. And Florence Nightingale's use of statistical graphics to demonstrate to the British Army that sickness caused many more deaths than battlefield injuries. Uh, consequent improvements in army hygiene after the presentation of her work dramatically reduced uh, the overall death rate in the army. In the first half of the 20th century, uh, as quantitative methods like regression analysis and analysis of variance were uh, developed and in their ascendancy, graphical methods were relegated to a uh, lesser role. They were commonly considered less precise and less important than the new quantitative methods. Um, Anscombe, in uh, an insightful paper in 1973, um, commented about statistical packages at that time, um, that most of them originated in the pre-visual era, that is, uh, in the uh, first half of the uh, 20th century, um, and Anscombe said, the user is not showered with graphical displays. We can get them only with trouble, cunning, and a fighting spirit. It's time that was changed. Anscombe presented a uh, striking example. Four simple data sets, each with 
just two coordinates, X and Y, and 11 points. If you don't look at the uh, plot that I'm showing you, but if you just take the numbers off and put them into your um, favorite statistical package, the four data sets will all give identical results in their regression analyses and their uh, analyses of variance. Uh, you can look at the uh, quantitative output, the pages of output, and say, well, you know, these all look very similar. They're, they're identical. But when you look at the plot, you see how very different graphical patterns can produce uh, the same quantitative results. This drives home the essential need for statistical graphics in order to distinguish these four cases uh, that are illustrated here from one another. And the same is true even to a much, much greater degree when we have dozens or hundreds or thousands uh, or perhaps millions of variables and uh, equally large or larger numbers of observations. Uh, graphics play an essential role in showing the uh, structure, uh, in finding and showing the structure of large data sets. Yeah. Between the 1950s and the 1970s, uh, Tukey developed a philosophy of exploratory data analysis. EDA uses graphics, quantitative analyses, and everything else we know, um, different kinds of analyses that don't fall into either of these categories and knowledge from every source to determine uh, as best we can the underlying structure of the data, figure out the key questions, answer them, and interpret them. Uh, the work of Edward Tufte put uh, graphics on the statistical map ending what Anscombe called the pre-visual era. Uh, Tufte's first book, The Visual Display of Quantitative Information, um, came out in 1983. Uh, his books are considered as a review in the Journal of the American Statistical Association. Uh, a review of the second edition says, uh, the cornerstones of today's information visualization research. I've listed um, Tufte's uh, table of contents uh, in visual display of quantitative information. I don't have time to go into the details. Um, a current account is in a book uh, published in this year, 2021, an account of the crucial role of data visualization in informed decision making. Um, uh, and uh, I also want to call your attention to the statistical thinking blog of Frank Harrell. Um, Frank has developed an extensive body of work on um, all aspects of statistical thinking uh, and analysis and methodology and uh, the impact of uh, statistical work on science and uh, everyday life. Uh, the range of topics is both broad and deep. Those of particular interest to us today are statistical graphics, computing in R and modeling, and clinical trial design analysis and reporting. And there's much more of great value here. Well-conceived and well-constructed graphs and plots avoid the syndrome uh, MIGO, my eyes glaze over, uh, that can occur in uh, evaluating a clinical trial's progress and determining, understanding, and explaining its outcome. As we noted earlier, art as well as science is involved uh, and careful thought and execution are required. Now, R is particularly well suited to developing and creating um, both the standard graphics for clinical trials and innovative graphics for tasks uh, that are, uh, that are um, necessary for clinical trials, but uh, not commonly found elsewhere. Um, these aspects of a trial include, to name a few, 
exploring the data, uh, detecting um, irregularities, outliers, and anomalies, monitoring and assessing operational success, uh, the performance of clinical research sites, variability within and between these sites on key metrics, uh, uh, assessing patient recruitment and retention, and the production of complete and accurate data from patients, monitoring and assessing the safety and efficient uh, efficacy of treatments, uh, displaying variability, uh, and other points we've talked about before. R is particularly well suited because its flexibility allows us to develop the methodology we need um, in a way that no pull down menu, uh, even with an extensive list of options, uh, ever can. So the R programming environment uh, is uh, enormously helpful for the broad suite of algorithms that we require to accomplish these tasks. R deals with diverse data types, uh, numeric, text, uh, and binary data, uh, single measurements, time series, event-based outcomes, and lots more. Uh, this flexibility is a crucial asset for R. I've listed here a few of the wide variety of R packages available for creating and developing uh, interesting graphics from the task view graphics, uh, R computation for graphics website. Uh, both general packages like Lattice and ggplot2 and others that are more specialized. Um, let's discuss now uh, major pitfalls uh, we must avoid in graphical displays for clinical trials. The objective of displays is to convey the outcomes of clinical trials clearly, concisely, completely, and correctly. Data visualization should never mislead or misinform. We can't afford to make honest mistakes because they have the same results as bad intentions. So here are a few common errors uh, made in data visualization. Um, high color contrast leads to a perception of great differences among the values, uh, often greater disparities than are actually present. Conversely, if a graphic has a low color contrast, it can make differences that are substantial uh, seem to be much smaller. So uh, the choice of colors and contrasts, I recommend um, always steering those manually, not using the default and assuming that it will uh, be effective. It often won't. Three-dimensional graphics are appealing, but often uh, introduce distortion. We have to be aware of that. Elements in the foreground appear larger. Those in the background appear smaller. Some objects in the front obscure those behind them. The scale relationships are confusing. So I would say use 3D graphics, ideally not at all, but if you use them with great caution, only when clearly beneficial. If graphics present too much information, they can overwhelm and overload the viewer. So um, just don't show too much. Superimposing two or more variables on the same graph can show a correlation that gives a strong visual impression of causation. Um, if we have two very similar uh, plots of say values of variables um, across a period of uh, you know, 10, uh, or 11 years or 20 years. And if the plots are very similar and the correlations are high, um, uh, very high, it may seem as if there is um, causation going on. It sort of leads us in that direction. Um, so when the variables really are related, uh, we can be, um, uh, it can be suggested to us, we can be convinced that there's causation going on when there isn't, if we're not careful. And finally, 
inattention to the scale values of X and Y uh, in order to show data uh, uh, the fluctuations in more detail or to improve the visual appeal uh, can really be highly misleading. Um, if we show the y-axis only from 200 to 300, the difference between the value 205 and the value 290 will seem enormous, much greater than it actually is, for example. Um, guidelines for uh, well-designed graphics for clinical trials and other uh, uses um, could start with Tufti's six fundamental principles of design. I don't have time to discuss all of them, but I want to focus on the strong element of subjectivity uh, in them, uh, the variables we choose uh, to perform our analyses, for example, but particularly on the last two establishing credibility and focusing on content. Okay. Uh, major goals at various stages of clinical trial uh, can include data display, exploration and analysis and reporting the results, all of which require uh, different kinds of graphics uh, to address the needs of these different tasks and of different audiences. Uh, work in progress with collaborators requires different graphics from regulatory reports, uh, peer-reviewed papers, and articles addressed to the general public. So choosing graphics best suited to your goals uh, from your immediate goal to your final goal um, is uh, of vital importance. I've listed a few examples here that I will um, just leave the list and move on. So um, graphics must be chosen carefully, designed carefully, and their contents must be specified carefully. If you include error bars in your graphics, they could mean standard error or 95% confidence interval or several other things. Your viewer won't know unless you tell what those error bars mean. Titles, labels, and legends should be informative and appropriate but not too uh, informative, fully informative, but not you know, uh, an overabundance of detail. Different levels of detail from an overview of the data set down to small individual chunks of data can be viewed with interactive graphics, viewing or hiding components at different levels as needed. And I've listed a few uh, R tools uh, for producing um, you know, reports of this kind here. So um, in summary, uh, make sure your graphics represent the data accurately and deliver the intended message and make sure that they support suitable interpretation of the trial data, uh, that they address the key questions of the study clearly and accurately, and that they keep uh, everything as simple as possible. The display should be as simple as possible, but no simpler. In other words, don't oversimplify. In conclusion, graphical displays are a vital component of the conduct and analysis of clinical trials. A lot of progress has been made, but much more remains to be done. Uh, the importance of specialized graphics for uh, specialized tasks of which I've mentioned a few uh, in clinical trials, uh, the importance of graphics for implementing, analyzing, understanding, and explaining clinical trials can hardly be overstated. And because of its flexibility and power, R is ideally positioned to lead in both refining standard graphics and developing new innovative graphics for clinical trials. Thank you very much.